بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ویئر وی کنٹینیو دا ٹاپک آف دا بائی پولر جنکشن ٹرانزسٹر ٹوڈے وی سی دا کامن بیس کنفیگریشن واٹ از اے کامن بیس کنفیگریشن سو لیٹ اس انٹروڈیوس یو فسٹ دا تھنگ از دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو امپلائی employ or put this thing inside a circuit right we have to put the bgt inside a circuit so how to put it inside a circuit how to use it inside any circuit so we'll have a number of configurations for that the thing is you you would be familiar by the name of a two port network or two port devices so bgt could be one of them as well but the thing is for that you have two terminals at the input and two terminals at the output right but over here in a bjt you've got three terminals emitter base collector so any of the two has to be emitter and any of the two has to be input any of the two has to be output which means you have to make one of them what you have to make one of them common right so to make one of them you make one of them common to the input and output side so you've got two for the input you've got two for the output so depending on that you've got three uh, three classifications or three configurations of the bjt to be employed in a circuit and the first that we see today is the common base configuration in which the base would be common to the input at the output side yes yes so let's say the first i give the heading is common base configuration common base configuration and let me draw a the the diagram for it the circuit diagram for it and i believe that you remember the what the the basic equations that we've seen previously right yes so let's say this was the 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 the, the circular block that i drew right so this was the base terminal right the base terminal then this is your collector terminal this one is your emitter terminal now depending on the transistor that you're using npn or a pnp you would have an arrowhead let's say i am using uh an npn transistor i am using an np n transistor let's say this is my emitter terminal and this is my collector terminal for instance this is the collector terminal this is the emitter terminal emitter base em base collector so npn transistor would imply what that the arrow is get going outside of the transistor so the base is is common so this would be grounded fine yes you could also have a a resistance involved over here and similarly the you would have you can have a resistance over here and and you would have a biasing potential and the biasing potential would be what for the considering let's say the active mode of operation so the emitter base junction has to be forward biased so for forward biased if this is an n p and n transistor so the n side has to be uh, connected to the to the to the negative terminal of the battery and the p side has to be connected to the positive terminal of the battery and isn't it like this so it is and similarly the for this side let's say we have a current limiting resistance so this is the collector base junction has to be reverse biased collector is n so the, the so this should be minus and collector is n so this should be plus this should be plus and base is p so this should be minus and this is what the case is right now the, the current limiting resistor so i name it as rc i name this as re you can also place over here rb you can just neglect these two as well let's say i have a biasing potential this is connected to the collector so i name it as vcc this one is connected to the emitter so i name it as ve a so this is a common base configuration the base is common to the other two terminals at one side you apply the input at the other side you will get the output right so over here we will not see that we'll see that in details in the next chapters to follow over here we will only be seeing the biasing and we'll start we study the the basic operation of that VEE why have I not written it as VEB so I could have written it like this but because of the resistance RE I have not written it so VEB would be what this would be VEB 
but I will not write it as VEB okay have a look the B is at a positive terminal so this is at a higher potential so which means that I would be writing this potential difference at VBE fine the, the higher potential is written first and you know that very well. Now again, if I did not have the current limiting resistance, so this VCE, VCC was directly the, the potential difference between the collector and the base. But I have a limiting resistance to so some drop, so I would name the collector to base voltage as what? As VCB over here, VCB. Over here C is at the higher potential. Now the next thing is uh, you know very well. The next thing is you know very uh, well that you are you are what I C I E. The basic relation is this: I E is equal to I C plus I B. You know this and you can establish it from here as well directly or indirectly whatever is the case so plus potential so ib will move into the battery emitter current is leaving npn transistor emitter current collector current will also leave have a look uh, no collector current will be entering as well collector current would also be entering so this is your common base configuration i is equal to ic plus ib right then you have what ic is equal to alpha times ie so ic is equal to alpha times ie plus icbo the collector with the other was open circuited the reverse saturation current common cb becomes for the common base alpha times ie this is the majority current this is due to the majority charge carriers icbo is for the minority charge carriers fine yes again you could have what you could uh, approximate it to ic could be approximated to what to alpha times ie where you know why because icbo is the minority charge current it can be neglected so alpha which is the dc current gain you could name it as ic upon i e is that fine till here it should be now the common base current amplification factor output by input the value of this is from somewhere 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 and the book has written this value is 0.90 to 0.99 something 0.90 to 0.98 i would write let's say for instance how much value of the emitter current is into the collector current we've already seen this so the mathematical things you know very well now so ib is equal to 1 minus alpha times ie ib is equal to 1 minus alpha times ie you can write from that equation ib is equal to 1 minus alpha times ie now now coming back now coming back so now to define the proper characteristics to define the device properly we need a two set of characteristics number one would be the input characteristics number two would be the output characteristics so the input characteristics are what the input characteristics that would be the input current for the input voltage so the input current over here is ie the input voltage over here would be vbe so which means that you would have a graph between values of ie this would be in the milliampere's range and you would have vbe on this side which would be in the volts range now have a look ie is equal to ic plus ib so which means this is independent of the value of what this is independent of the value of vbe isn't it like this it is no i'm sorry i'm sorry ie versus vbe this is just a simple forward bias diode if you see if this is an npn transistor have a look so have a look you have an n side over here 
you have a P side, then you have a P side, then you have an N side. So an N P N transistor. So have a look. This is your emitter. This is your base. So the emitter base is forward bias, which means this is minus. This is plus. So have a look. If this potential is V B E, the current flowing is I E. So is it not the forward bias characteristics of a diode directly? It is. So it is directly. the forward bias characteristics of a pn junction diode why because this is a pn junction diode in the forward bias region but these would be for fixed values of the output voltage vcb for fixed values of vcb so this current is measured at a particular value of vcb now what will happen if you if you change the output voltage will it have any effect on this will it have yes it will yes it will so for that what do we need to study is we need to study an effect called the early effect we need to study an early effect or this is also called a base width modulation base width modulation so now what is this so let's get into it so we have considered an npn transistor right so if this is my n side this is heavily doped then you have the p side and then you have another n side with the largest area with the largest area now what happens is if this is the npn transistor so you have uh, electrons over here so which means you have got plus ions over here and you've got minus ions over here the metallurgical width of the base metallurgical width means what the original width or the total width that we have considered for the base is wb yes isn't it it is but have a look there is a depletion layer in this width as well which is reducing the metallurgical or the effective width of the base effective width means what that that width in which the recombination will take place so that is getting reduced why because the depletion layer uh, there are no free charge carriers there are only these ions so which means as if i increase the reverse bias potential vcb vcb is the reverse bias potential right so if this vcb which is the reverse bias potential as this is increased so what will happen the width of the depletion layer will increase this is let's say the width of the depletion layer wd dash the wd sorry so if the reverse biasing potential increases this implies that the width of the depletion layer increases and if the width increases this means it gets more penetrated inside the the base region over here also it will increase but that is quite a larger area so it will not have that sort of a dominant effect but over here have a look the effective width has reduced let me name this as a w effective why w effective because the recombination is taking place over here so have a look the wb what do, what do we have uh, i just forgot the name over here that the w uh wait 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 okay this wb width of the base this is equal to this effective width plus let's say this i name as w this i name as w this w represents the width that of the depletion layer which has penetrated inside the base region so what will happen if the width of the depletion layer increases this would imply that the more penetration over here that w would also increase and if w increases this implies that the w effective would reduce w effective would reduce why because w effective is the wb minus w so w has increased so the w effective would decrease which means the chances 
of recombination would further reduce or in other words so you could have it in two sort of words one thing is you would say that the chances of the recombination has reduced so initially what was happening that the, the, the electrons were recombining so the battery was providing it with more electrons right yes so that was a current IB so if the recombination has reduced so the loss electrons will reduce so the battery will not provide them that much electrons so which means the current has reduced the base current has reduced yes yes or in other words you could say that the base region has became more thin it has became more thin so the the electrons from the inside having a high kinetic energy have more chances more and more chances to directly jump into the collector region which means that the collector current has increased the collector current the collector current has increased of course meaning that the emitter current has increased the emitter current has increased why because the base one would reduce so ie is ic plus ib so have a look if ib has reduced ic has increased so this means that ie has increased so you can see if the w effector reduces over here you could write that ib has reduced you could say that ic has increased so this means what that i e has increased so which means that if we be we see b has increased so i would come now to the left side my current has increased this is for another value so so let's say this is for we see two this is for we see one the black is for we see so we see two is greater than we see one is greater than we see we see b right we see b we see b and i hope that you have understood this point this point is called this thing is called the the early effect or it's also called the base with modulation why because we have we have played with the width of the base this was an important point to cover over here the two possibilities that i that could happen so i let me write it chances of recombination reduces right so the battery will not provide that battery will not provide those electrons so ib has reduced and the second thing is that the width has reduced so this implies that directly more chances that it directly goes to the collector region fine yes so this was about it the w effect to increase the concentration gradient increasing in this and that so this was the input characteristics this was the input characteristics of the of this circuit now the output characteristics now the output characteristics is a curve between the output quantities so the output quantity is ic and it's ic versus the output voltage which is vcb so have a look ic does not have any dependency on vcb ic does not have any dependency on vcb so you could say that without any change or let me check first if, if i am writing it correctly yes i am so you have this thing you have a linear graph you have a linear you have a straight graph so be equal to zero why because you can see from the equation of IC that IC is independent of the value of VCB. But practically, this is not the case. Practically, this is not the case. Uh, and it, it depends on IE only, right? But again, have a look from the... Uh, from the from this i've already named i've already done it over here i've already done it over here what happens with the change of vcb so have a look on the change of vcb i have already discussed that the collector current ic will increase so as vcb increases ic will increase as we see, V increases, I C will increase. So have a look for a practical for a practical transistor. 
this would be the graph this would be the graph right this one would be the graph fine this is let's say for vcb1 this is for vcb2 so where vcb2 is greater than vcb1 this was for the ideal case fine yes now what do i have do i have anything else to tell you do i have anything else to tell you so uh okay nothing over here nothing over here okay over here i have something okay if you extrapolate on the left hand side you will get the early voltage and you don't have anything to do with it at this level but anyways let me just mention it over here that if you extrapolate extrapolate on this side you will get to a voltage this is represented by a va and this va is called the early voltage and let it be just let it be this is this is not of your concern at this level if we need it somewhere we may we may discuss it earlier the book has not discussed it anywhere the book has not discussed it anywhere so we have uh, another word over here another word associated with this is a punch through it's punch through punch through So in punch through what do you have you increase the reverse bias voltage such that the entire base width is depleted of free charge carriers increase reverse bias voltage such that entire base is depleted of free charge carriers right but this should not occur okay this should not occur in this case what will happen that the w effective of the weight would approximately become equal to zero so in this case the power dissipation would be very large and it can it cannot it will damage your device it must damage your device fine yes sir so what do i have over here is uh, another thing is we could also be talking about the breakdown so if vcb with increase of vcb this is a, this is the, the reverse bias potential so we all talk about the breakdown so after a certain level of this when you achieve your breakdown vcb is increased to such a level that you increase your breakdown a breakdown would occur and the current would rapidly rise will not take it to that level although but you should know this would be your breakdown voltage breakdown voltage so this is it this is about the input characteristics this is about the output characteristics and i believe that i should just finish this video over here now one thing over here we talked about the reverse leakage current right we talked about the leakage current ic is equal to alpha times ie plus icbo this was the current the collector current right so when ie is equal to zero when, let me name this as one so when ie is equal to zero so this implies what that the emitter leg has been open circuited emitter has been open circuited so this would imply that ic would only be equal to icbo ic would be equal to icbo so i don't know why i have i written it but just this just came into my mind so you have a lightly doped an avalanche breakdown would occur ic versus vcb ic versus vcb i've already done over here if vcb is greater than the breakdown potential then the current increases rapidly and this increases by the by a multiplication factor of m and let me just write down the uh, the relation for that m m is equal to 1 over 1 minus vcb by the breakdown voltage we break down to the power n where this n ranges from 3 to 6 this n ranges from 3 to 6 right so what is this multiplication factor if this current is icbo 
let's say if this current is icpo so this current in the breakdown region would be what would be m times icpo and this m is a multiplication factor and what is this multiplication factor so basically this is a lightly doped side and you have a, 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 a what an avalanche breakdown an avalanche breakdown what happens is you know very well one electron will hit another they will come two two hit two more four four hit four more eight so they multiply and this multiplication factor comes from there right yes so you could have the input resistance the output resistance and uh, you could just see it yourself right can't you you can or just let me you know uh, if you want me to write it okay okay the input resistance and the output resistance so just let me draw it just let me write it so our input from the input characteristics would be what this is uh, where is it here it is so our input this would be equal to change of vb by change of ie this is named as re a small re okay so you have a change of vbe upon the change of ie so this would be your input resistance similarly your output resistance so the output resistance this would be equal to a capital r output let's say and this is equal to i have written it over here this is v a no wait not v a yes this v a this v a the early voltage v a upon upon i c upon i c yes yes so i believe that is it let me just just write down a certain number of applications of this common base configuration so that we finish the overall common base in this one video we'll just finish overall common base configuration in this one video so let me write a few characteristics and applications of this so let's make some characteristics So the first characteristics is that the input resistance is low low input resistance the second is a high output resistance a high output resistance yes yes next is it has a low current gain we saw from the value of alpha it has a low current gain which you saw from the value of alpha that alpha was less than one it has a high voltage gain a high voltage gain so which means that this could be used as a voltage amplifier this circuit will use it in the next chapters the fifth it if low current gain high voltage gain so the power gain ap is moderate isn't it like this it is and then it provides a zero phase shift provides zero phase shift this is something important which means that if your input is a sinusoid the output is the same sinusoid without having any phase shift right and the same one is that it has a larger bandwidth and the bandwidth would refer to what that the range of frequency that it can amplify so have a look the application would be what the application would be that it can be used as a constant current source constant current source why because this is shifting a high a lower resistance to a higher resistance so which means the current in the circuit would be the same so it would shift a high a low level voltage to a high level voltage so have a look it can be used as a constant current source it has it has no phase shift it has a high voltage gain so it can be used as a non inverting amplifier it can be used as a non-inverting amplifier it can be used for the purpose of impedance matching as in transformer one side impedance is less the other is higher you can use it as impedance matching circuit the output impedance is high input impedance is low if we refer output resistance to input we can convert high resistance to low same as in transformer so we'll see that and the next is from the bandwidth as it has a larger bandwidth so it can be used as a high frequency amplifier and i believe i have just taken a lot of time and i have uh, you know made this boring i have made this very boring 
even though I skipped the the what the uh, the transfer characteristics I skipped that but anyways I hope this is clear the input characteristics is a curve of the input current versus the input voltage for different values of the output voltage the output characteristic is the curve of the output current versus the output voltage for different values of the input current right these are different values of the input current that is ie okay do i did i make any mistake over here the output characteristics please let me wait just give me a second so what is this for different levels of input current yes it is for different levels of input current so i made a mistake over here this would be for ie1 this would be for IE2, this is IE2, this is IE1, where IE2 is greater than IE1. The explanation is the same. The explanation is the same. If I have explained it wrong over there, I, I should not have explained. Maybe I've just used the term of VCB instead of IE. The thing is the same VCB is increasing, IE is increasing. IE is increasing. IC is increasing so they are all the same things right yes and these are some characteristics this is a multiplication factor right the basic thing was that the base is common to the input and the output side one would be emitter is, let's say the input collector is at the output now this I used for an NPN transistor similar could be the case for a PNP transistor so for a PNP transistor what would happen this arrow would first of all become reverse then you would write this as a VEB right these polarities would become reversed then this you would write as vcb and the direction of the currents have a look ie would be this side ib would be leaving and ic would be this side similarly you would have a p n p over here so over here here you would have negative ions over here you would be having positive ions where we are talking of electrons they will talk of holes we were talking of holes they will talk of electrons that is it See you in the next video with the topic of the next configuration we would take one common one input and the other output side. Till then take care of yourselves everyone around you. Goodbye.